All right. As I was saying, um, you know, disappointed in the way the second half went last week. I thought, um, you know, that, that we just we, we couldn't get any momentum in the second half. I, you know, I think um, we go three and out in the first series. They go down and score. We come back, throw an interception, they score again, you know, and then we never regained any of that uh, momentum. They had it, grabbed it, and, and kept it. Um, and then, you know, just handed the ball to zero and couldn't, couldn't get him down. And, uh, you know, and then uh, obviously the outcome was not what we intended for it to be, um, you know, but at the end of the day, we got to do a better job coaching. We got to do a better job executing. Um, you know, obviously when we're, we're executing and, you know, our guys are doing that, we, we look, we compete with anybody out there. We've shown that this year. Um, we have not sustained that throughout the games, um, and thus the results. But so we got to do a better job as coaches, um, you know, as players and everybody in our organization. Um, you know, we're going to do everything we can um, to come out here and win this game this weekend. Uh, you know, you know, we, we've got a great opportunity in our stadium in Nippert, um, in front of our fans that that are unbelievable to come out and, and put on a, a very good product on that field and go out and get a win. You know, here's, here's two teams right here. They're, they're in very similar situations, and you think about, you know, two programs over the last whatever years have done a, a great job um, of winning a lot of football games. Um, you know, we're sitting here in very similar positions. Um, you know, here toward the end of the season in, our, in their first season in the Big 12, and um, you know, it's um, it's it's been difficult, obviously, for both programs. Um, you know, if you think about it, and really both. If I'm watching them this week, they they've done um, they've played some outstanding football at times. I mean, their their offense is unbelievable. You know, their defense can really run, and somehow, you know, have not won games and. Um, you know, I think, you know, same for us, turnovers has been a big factor in that. I think for both teams, um, you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's eerily similar, uh, I think, when you look at that. Um, you know, both teams can run the football. They're, they're, you know, I think we're sixth in the country in rushing the football, but we're number three in the Big 12. You know, they're number one. So I think there's only six yard difference there or so, but they can run the football very well. Um, and, you know, and, and it really has come down to turnovers for them in some of their games. And, so we're excited about going out and playing them. You know, we're putting everything we can to win this football game. Um, we're going to play the players that we think can give us the best chance to win this football uh, football game. Um, you know, and 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 go out and try to play the very best game we played this year. It is Military Appreciation Day. Um, we're excited, you know, to be able to honor our military, which is, is important to me, important to to all of us. Um, we are wearing a special decal. You guys can see that on the helmet here, um, which is a U.S. Um, with a naval ship, USS Cincinnati, I think based out of uh, San Diego, which is awesome. And um, to be able to wear that this weekend and honor those guys and we and you know, appreciate everything that they do. But, um, you know, talking about some injuries, you know, we did get banged up a little bit in the last game, particularly at running back. Um, you know, Miles, man, had another great run, explosive. That's two games in a row, which we love that. Um, Corey ran extremely hard. Both of those guys, I, I foresee both of them playing. Uh, you know, I think they both um, will be out there at practice today. Um, you know, potentially a little little limited, but but it will be out there at practice. Um, so I think, I think they'll be good to go. We're hoping to get Ryan Montgomery back um, healthy so he can help in a little bit in the return game, kickoff return game, punt return game, as well as at running back. Um, you know, Ethan Wright, I can't remember if I mentioned this, but he's you know, he's not going to play the rest of the year, so he's out just trying to heal up his back. Um, you know, I think so he's he's going to be out. Um, Dingles, another guy, got banged up a little bit, but but practice Sunday, so he'll he'll be ready to go. Um, you know, at this time of the year, we got you know a lot of guys beat up and banged up, but that, that's that's the way it is. You know, we we've talked about this earlier where you got to play some more guys, and you know we played we played a lot of guys. You know, Dorian will be back this week, missed last week's game. Uh, due to uh, the passing of his grandmother, um, you know, and so you know that's good to have, be able to have him back as well. But um, but listen, like I said, we're we're doing everything we can to 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 go out and play the very best game of the season and, and go out and try to get this win. You got a little bit of an extended look at Brady Lichtenberg towards the end of that game. Was it enough to take a look at quarterback this <clears> week, or are you? Yeah, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna. I think you know Brady played well there. Um, you know, got a touchdown drive was awesome. You know, good play by AT in the end zone. Um, did some really good things for us. He certainly made the case to play some. You know, we'll, we'll continue to battle this week in, in practice and, you know, see where we're at with that. Uh, you know, but certainly could foresee him, you know, getting some time in the game and playing. And, um, you know, again, we're, we're trying to do everything we can to win. So, um, you know, if he can get out there and if he'll give us the best spark to win, then we'll certainly go that route. But, 
um, you know, we'll see how this this week practice goes. I asked you some of this the other night, but uh, in baseball terms, you're, you're out of the pennant race. This is when the, the late season call-ups. Uh, you mentioned Barry Jackson. Anyone mm -hmm. else that's going to get in there? And is there any foreseeable chance of Drogosh even getting snaps? Well, I think again, I'll reiterate the fact that we're you know we're still trying to compete to win this football game. You get twelve opportunities, twelve chances. We're going to do the best we can to try to win these games, these remainder four. Um, you know, but we I'd mentioned this earlier that Barry's a guy that we want to play in four no matter what. You know, our record's going to be we want to play him in four. Um, we've really been gearing him up the last few weeks just to you know so he, when he gets an opportunity to play that he'll know what to do out there and. Um, you know, so he could certainly be a guy that, that maybe gets some time out there, over the, you know, at least three out of these last four games. Um, and now you got to see which ones that may be. But, but he certainly is a guy that we could get in there um, as well as some others. Um, you know, I, I think um, we're, we're going to try to win the football game, so we're going to try to play the best guys we can play to win the game. Um, you know, not a scenario where, hey, we're just going to you know, play freshmen just to play them. You know, we're going we're to try to go out there. If there is an opportunity to play some freshmen and get them in, in the games because we had that plan all along, all along anyway, then we'll continue to do that. End of the first half, you had the two run plays. Second one, Miles got banged up a little bit. What was the motivation going with the two run plays mm -hmm. and not taking a knee maybe or taking a – well, because I think at the end of the game or end of the half, you, there's a pop possibility they're all sinking off, maybe to pop one. Um, I've been in games before where, man, we against Virginia Tech one year, we go 90 yards for a touchdown right before half on, on a, just a running play. So you still got time on the clock. You know, the thought is let's go see if we can pop one. And, you know, the first, first play I think we got 10. You know, the second one, man, you miss a tackle, you may go to the house. I mean, let's take advantage of that. But that was the, that was the thinking in that. UCF is a team that you saw while at Louisville. Mm -hmm. How does that familiarity help with this week's preparation? Yeah, uh, you know, different defensive coordinator uh, th this year. Um, you know, so but but at the same time, Coach Miles on and you know going against their offense, we've been able to see that. Um, I, I think it helps. I think it, it helps to know how fast they are. I mean, because we played them, and um, you know, it, and to be able to understand the speed of the game. Um, you know, both running backs can, can really, really run. They have some wide receivers that can really run, and their quarterbacks can run. Um, you know, these both of their quarterbacks, you know, can, can absolutely uh, can do it in the run game. Um, you know, so I think it, it, that helps in the fact of just, you know, having an idea about that. But still, you got to go out there and play. You know, we, we have not done a good job in explosives on defense. Um, and they've done a great job of explosives on offense. So that's not a great matchup, you know, for us this week. Um, you know, we got to do all we can to try to help keep them contained and not giving up those big plays. But, you know, their backs and receivers have made big plays on everybody this year. Um, you know, but we have to try to do something to contain them um, in that regard. You know, and I think defensively, um, you know, some similarities from what they did in the past, you know, because that, that D.C. was on staff. Um, there in the past, but um, but I do haven't played them, and I think more than anything, just personnel-wise, there's a lot of guys that we're familiar with over the last couple of years. Neil, you mentioned the running backs there for UCF a little bit. R.J. Harvey, Javon Baker, obviously on the outside. Just talk about the challenges those two can really mm -hmm. bring to the table. Obviously, they can do so much that can really yeah. lead to the defense. Yeah, I mean it is. It's challenging. I think a couple of things. You know, they are. You know, they're they're no huddle. They're going to tempo you and you know and try to get you where you're not lined up. You know, we got to do a great job of, of getting lined up, recognizing formations, um, recognizing what they potentially could could run in that formation. But you got to do it in a real quick time. I think that presents issues. Also, what they do with those guys and try to create space. They want their speed guys in space to where you, you know, maybe you have a one-on-one -on -one opportunity there, and they feel like their guy's going to win that, you know, because of that speed. And uh, we've seen it, you know, throughout this whole season with with them watching the film. Um, and, and that presents problems. Um, you know, you know, RJ Harvey's starting, you know, but it's, there's not much drop off, you know, when zero comes in and plays as well. So um, they can rotate those guys and, and still feel good about their running game. You played a bunch of quarterbacks that were like six foot, 200 pounds. And John Rice Plumley is mm -hmm. the, the latest one. Is mm -hmm. he the, the better of the bunch? I mean, he can really hurt you with his legs yeah. and passing. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's as talented as anyone we've played. You know, he, he's, um, he was he was one of the fastest players at Ole Miss, you know, and he's probably one of the faster players there. Um, you know, I've heard reports of four three, you know, forty on him. You know, he did go out a few weeks ago with an injury, but he came back and he's wearing a knee brace and he it hasn't slowed him down. I mean, he's still he's still running around. He's fast. He's, a, he's an excellent player. He's a playmaker. Um, very confident in throwing the football as well. Um, you know, and 
and I think you know they, they try to present those issues with you on the outside where you're trying to stop the run, and now you're a little bit more one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and they feel like their wideouts can run. And, and Plumlee's got great confidence in his guys to go make plays for him on the outside as well. You know, so it, it, he's a true dual threat, one of the better dual threats in the country, and, um, and that's why you know they have one of the better offenses in the country as well because of that. The run game being as good as it has been, does that make it maybe doubly frustrating that the passing game is kind mm. of fits and starts good yeah. for a quarter, bad yeah. for a quarter? Yeah, just inconsistent, you know. And, you know, anytime you can run the football, it, it should open up and help the passing game. And, you know, for whatever reason, you know, we have been inconsistent, whether it be errant throws or drops um, or both. And um, and then it just gets you off track, you know. But But I think – you know, yeah, that's frustrating, the fact that we can run the football. You know, and, and coming in to this season, it had you told me, hey, you know, at this point in the season, after eight games, you've got to be six in the, in the country in Russia, and I'd, I'd feel, number one, I'd be surprised, and I'd feel really good about that. Um, and But I think I feel, feel like our record would be a lot better, too, um, because it, it does. It opens up so much more in, your, in, in the throw game. Um, you also feel like you can control the clock that way, which helps your defense. You know, so there's a lot of reasons, but – and the fact that – you know, we had, you know, all new starters back on offense and to be able to sit in there in this position. I, I'm really excited about our offensive line and, and backs, how they've been able to block and run the football this year. And that's that's been a, a true bright spot for us, um, something that we certainly should build off of the next, you know, four games here. And, and um, you know, as we head into next year as well, I mean, just knowing that you got a lot of those guys back. Piggybacking on that, you complete the first pass uh, of the mm -hmm. game for a, for a huge yeah. chunk. And then I think one of four, the rest of the first half, was that Emory checking out? Was it not getting the looks? It was, well, it was a little bit, you know, it was, the weather wasn't great. You know, it was, you know, mist and rain. Um, we, you know, we tried to throw a couple balls. They were errant throws. Um, and, you know, then, you know, as, as, as you're starting to call plays, you realize, all right, wait, should we, we – and we were running the ball good too. So let's, let's rely a little bit more on the run. Let's try to control it, keep their offense off the field. Let's run the ball a little bit more here. Um, you know, not feeling great about throwing at that point. Uh, you know, we, we did try to call. We got, we got a pressure. We got a holding call. Um, you know, when we hit the end route, we hit a um, – who did we hit? Braden Smith, um, you know, for a big gainer. We get, but we get the holding. Um, you know, so I think all those factors, which is why we didn't try to throw it as much early um, in that second quarter because of that, you know. But, you know, you, you got to have those opportunities and we, we got to take advantage of them. We didn't. And, and therefore, you know, played a little bit more close to the vest. And now, you yeah, but it's, it's a 10 7 game at halftime. You're still feeling good about it at halftime. When we're coming back out, I was like, shoot, I feel good. Let's go. And then you just, you know, we did nothing, you know, and couldn't, couldn't regain that momentum. Dante seemed to really take that loss Saturday personally and put a lot of blame on himself. How does having a guy like that as a leader mm -hmm. kind of letting everyone know that, you know, the players need to play better, execution needs to be better? How does that help you as a coach yeah. and staff? Well, I, he's awesome. You know, Dante has been awesome. He's been great all year, all summer, uh, leadership wise. Um, you know, particularly for, you know, he's a younger player, but to, to have the kind of leadership skills that he has. Um, because he goes out every day and tries to get better, you know, which is what you want. He's, he's a, you know, leader by example, but also, you know, he'll vocalize it as well. And um, and he's one of our better players. So when anytime you have your, you know, your best player leading like that, I mean, it says a lot about your team, um, you know, and we got to have continue to have that leadership, um, you know, the remainder of this season. And, you know, he's certainly a guy that we're going to lean on to be able to, to help lead our team and, and get our team in the win column. A lot of people are wondering when you're in those third and short, fourth and short, situations you like to go to the QB drawer out of the gun is it as easy as it sounds to do the QB sneak or is it more complicated than a lot of fans may think it is? well uh, you're talking about sneak quarterback sneak yeah I mean and we've utilized it some this year um, you know I think the Eagles have made it very popular um, you know you look at the NFL a lot of teams have tried but but most teams have not done it like the Eagles um, I think there is a lot more to it you know what we've also seen is defenses now when you do go to the sneak, they're loading everybody up in the box, you know, with all their their, their D line is getting really tight to the center and then having two linebackers right in those A gaps as well. It makes it a lot more challenging. Um, you know, but we've had some success with it, but it, it is a lot I mean, if it was easy, everybody would do it every time. And you know, so it's not as easy as everybody thinks it is. Um, the Eagles do a phenomenal job with it. They have confidence in it, and then I think Hertz really believes in it as well. You know, but it is something that People have utilized, and we've utilized it, and you may continue to utilize it some, but I don't think you can go to that well 
every time. I think you know you certainly have to be able to do some other things as well with that. Yeah, Kelsey. The Kelsey's the, probably the, yeah. He's a little bit you know underrated when it comes to that because he's the center that they keep running it on behind every time, and um, it's got them a lot of first downs. And and you know they certainly have the market on how to run it. That's for sure. Wasn't a factor in the in the stats at all. And he, he'd been really coming on. Was that just because of the game conditions, the weather, just the way the passing game was going? Yeah, I mean, no, I think I think like I mentioned in the first half, you know, uh, with the you know cold, rainy, and you know, Emory wasn't feeling good about it. You know, a couple of errant throws, and we were running the football pretty good, and so you continue to want to do that. Um, you know, and then obviously in the second half, it kind of got away from us a little bit. And so now you're doing, trying to do some different type things. But, you know, also Peyton played a little bit more in this game as well. Um, you know, and I think I think maybe they had something to do with it too. But I think the combination of all that is probably the reason why, you know, he didn't get his touches this week. I believe there was 16 big plays that Oklahoma State finished with. The majority of those came on first and second down. What do you guys need to do differently defensively in early get down situations to prevent that? Well, we, we were we were just, you know, if you go back and look some of those explosive plays, you know, you know, guys not getting to their gaps, you know, some linebackers, you know, we you know, we're not getting to where they needed to get to. We're you know, both guys need to be flowing over, you know, we got guys splitting like this and now it creates gaps in the middle of the field. Um you know, it, it really came down to that. And then in the fourth quarter, we're playing some of our younger guys in the fourth quarter when he hit he hit, you know, a couple of those long ones in the fourth quarter, uh, explosives. Um, you know, so I think that's really what it boiled down to. As you think about the first half, you know, we did a, a much better job of fitting where we needed to be. Um, you know, they hit the they hit the tight end on a touchdown. You know, our linebacker falls down on that one. That was a one on one coverage um, for an explosive. But other than that, we did a great job of hemming them up. I mean, that that's the type of ball we want to play. Is we want to fit right um, and be physical at the point of attack, like we did in the first half. You know, in the second half, it got away from us a little bit. Again, fourth quarter, you're playing some, you know, other guys that hadn't played as much, trying to get them some time, and you know, they ended up hitting a few more on us at, at that point. Any other questions for Coach? Thank you. Sir. All right, thanks, guys. All right, questions from Malik. Back. Malik, I know this is a difficult spot. You've probably never been in in your football career. What do you? What is the 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 path to keep? fighting to keep you know pushing forward to, to try to get this thing back on track uh, right now the focus is going one and one and oh every week uh, get to uh, a streak of games we can at the end of the season win four straight make a bowl game uh, gonna keep fighting until the possibility possibility of that isn't a thing focus says you're the top edge so we, does that give you bragging rights over Dante a little bit? Uh, is that kind of fun? And do you get a free subscription out of that? Uh, I actually didn't know that, but um, it's just kind of on the back burner at the moment. Uh, right now the focus is just on trying to win, um, win at all costs, and hopefully we get back on track this week. Coach Shadowfield's talked about vocal leadership and how there was much more energy against Baylor. What's what have you kind of seen from the leadership on the defensive side of the ball? Who's kind of stepped up in the past few weeks as from a veteran's point of view? Um, I feel like it's always been there. Um, me, Dante and Briggs, of course, um, Deshaun Pace started to vocalize more and it's starting to be seen and felt a little bit more. And um, even Jonathan Thompson, he started to speak a little bit more. He's gotten to start the past few games uh, due to some injuries and um, he's been doing really well, and I think he'll be good moving forward uh, as I progress out of here, and he's the next in line. I think he'll be really good. UCF is a team that you guys are really familiar with. How is this week maybe a little bit different in terms of preparation compared to the past couple weeks? Uh, I don't think there will be any difference. Uh, they move at a little bit faster tempo. Just got to be ready for that. Um, familiarity breeds contempt, but we have to come in here like it's a normal work week, just like it's a new opponent coming in here and get ready for them and prepare to win the game on Saturday. You're one of only a couple guys that that actually might be the only guy that enrolled early after that losing season, yeah. the four and eight season. Is there anything from those guys that you were around as you saw that off season kind of catapult into the the 2018 year that you can that you think back on that that you you looked at how they handled it uh they just came back in ready to work uh they knew that season was just not what the talent they had showed 
Um, they just tried to put it behind them and every day was just working towards something new, something positive and having older guys like Cortez Brown and uh, uh, Cope and Kamani and Gary Campbell and those guys, they were just trying to improve every day. Um, they never really hung too much on the past. And then they just instilled that in me, just never let it happen again. So we're trying to right now right this ship, get back to an even record. That's the best we can do at the moment and get to a bowl game. There were no sacks Saturday. Uh, what do you see out of John Rice Plumley? You saw him a little bit last year. Um, I don't know if you traveled to that game or not because I know you were, you were hurt. But um, very mobile. Um, what do you see out of him? You've chased your share of quarterbacks. Uh, they actually have two really mobile quarterbacks. Um, just the game plan for him is keep him in the pocket, make him throw the ball. But obviously, they run 80-some plays, so that's going to be a little bit tough. But I do think we'll be able to match up with him really well in some of our drop eight concepts. Um, just make him be the quarterback they needed him to be on Saturday. So we'll see. RJ Harvey was a guy who exploded versus you guys last season. Just talk about the challenges he brings to the table coming into Saturday's matchup. Um, all the running backs are home run hitters, RJ especially. Um, he flashed last week versus, or two weeks ago versus Oklahoma. He found a little seam and took it for about 70, and it was just like, this kid just hit top end speed in about four steps. Uh, but no, they definitely have some home run hitters over there. Um, have to corral them, keep them inside, and tackle when our opportunities present themselves and when our one-on-one -on -one match up with them in a hole. Just got to get them down. Was that maybe the best back you faced in your career last week? Uh, I think J.K. Dobbins has an edge on him and Kenneth Gainwell. But he was up there, though? Oh, yeah. That boy was good. Yes, sir. Questions for Antoine? Last week, so uh, that that's a start. I'm sure there's more more to come for you. Yes, sir. Um, you know, it was a big opportunity for me. It was my first start of the season. Um, you know, I had a little bit of nerves coming out, but uh, after that first play, I was good. I had missed a tackle, but um, it is what it is. I just got to make that play. Is it hard finding that balance of like being excited because things are happening for you, but the team is not getting the wins that you know you guys are used to? I mean, yeah, it is, but you know we're working hard every day. Um, you know, I mean, we just got to keep working hard. Uh, <laughs> Can you repeat the question again? Uh, just th that balance between being excited that you're getting on the field and, and doing what you do, but you're not winning right, right now. Yeah, I mean, it's always exciting to play, you know, playing the sport that you love. But, I mean, losing is just a part of the game. You're not going to win every single game. But, you know, we're working hard every single day. You know, we're not trying to lose at all. But, I mean, the teams that we faced were just really good, and we tried our best against each team that we played. Has your dad been able to help you with the ups and downs and, like, what to expect and how how this all works? Yeah, I mean, he's kind of saying the same thing that our coaches are saying. You know, it's our first uh, year in the Big 12. You know, I mean, no one really expected us to be on top. But, you know, we're really working hard and trying to get our first dub with the Big 12. It's no secret that some of us have covered your father here <laughs> in addition to you. Uh, what would a, a victory Saturday mean to him with him going into the hall on Friday? And, what, and what's this weekend mean to you? Um, for him, it would be really exciting for him, you know, uh, especially with me playing. Uh, again, our first win for the Big 12. Um, you know, it would be really big for the whole team as well, just getting the first dub of the, with the Big 12. And it would just be really exciting for us. This season has been a whirlwind for you. Obviously, you entered as a walk-on, then you get put on scholarship before the season. Just walk us through how this offseason has been like for you and how you have been able to take that and grow from it as a player. So this offseason, I was working really hard every single day. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't really expecting to get put on scholarship. But the, with the way that I was working this offseason, you know, I was really hoping that I would get um, put on scholarship. 
but you know, just I worked hard every single day. I studied film, and I studied the playbook as well, and uh, I earned a scholarship. It's more excited about that he's going into the Hall of Fame or that you are starting at UC? <laughs> um, you know, that's a tough question. I mean, he's really excited for both. Um, I would most definitely have to say Hall of Fame. That's all he talks about is just going into the Hall of Fame, you know. Uh, he always talks about, you know, just like missing practice, not missing practice, but um, him not going to like school or whatever, going to work because he's a Hall of Famer now. But, um, yeah, he just talks about Hall of Fame status now. So, most definitely Hall of Fame. Obviously, it's been kind of a tough season for the secondary. How are you guys challenging each other and keeping each other's spirits up week by week, trying to kind of progress as the season goes on? Uh, something uh, Coach Brown said, our defensive coordinator, he always says, good. You know, we're not having a very good start to the season or right now, but he always just says, good, uh, which basically just means, you know, we just got to keep working hard, and you know it's good that we're struggling right now because if, with struggle, it comes with success. So eventually, we will uh, have success and be successful. You've always known you were Antoine Peak Jr. At, at what point did you figure out and realize this Antoine Peak Senior guy was pretty good at football? And and when did you finally? How much did you watch him? When when did that come? Um, I really realized that he was like really good about uh, about the start of high school when I was actually like watching the stuff that he was doing and the film that he showed me of the things that he was doing back in college and in the NFL. But um, I, honestly, I don't really remember too much watching him playing, but um, just like the videos that I've seen of him playing, it was just like super electric and you know he just like knew what he was doing. He was out there making plays. And it kind of got me juiced up just watching the things that he was doing on the field. Any other questions for Antoine? Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you.